one. Oh my god, did you see what Hasbro revealed at San Diego Comic Con this week? Because if you didn't, you're about to. This is Australian Transformers Weekly. Uh, I don't know what episode number it is because I've had no sleep all week and uh, I'm excited about San Diego Comic Con. So uh, let's go to the credits and we'll get into it immediately after. For the record, it's 160, but it may as well be yes, this is a special <laughs> Good. All right, you can edit that out. Okay, oh, yeah. hi. No, that's... Oh. <laughs> okay, hi. Welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly. Um, I have been reliably informed while the opening credits were playing by Brad that it is episode 160. Um, there's, there's a ton of stuff revealed just in the last 48 hours or so by Hasbro as uh, all of their news, all their reveals for pretty much like the upcoming year of Transformers. Um, so we're going to we're gonna not waste too much time uh, getting to the news. First of all, though, Brad, how are you doing? Good, Jason. Yourself? I am. Obviously, I'm reeling still from all the SCCC reveals. It's it's great. Um, it's like it's like Christmas, except I don't get any toys. I just get to look at them. So um, maybe that considering maybe, maybe it's more like Christmas shopping. <laughs> considering it's so many people over here are looking for Wave Two and mm. Three of Power of the Primes mm. eagerly, and all of a sudden. These new figures have dropped, and it's just like holy crap. Yeah, but these figures aren't going to be out till next year anyway. So like they've they've still got time to finish finish things off. Anyway, um, before we before we do get into the news, we should talk bot shots. How about how about we talk about bot shots? Let's do it. We'll just cover it off very quickly. Bot Shots is our uh, regular photography competition in the uh, Transformers Collectors Club Australia Facebook group. You are encouraged to get your bots out from behind their glass doors, their wooden doors, out of their boxes, off their shelves, and um, put them into someone's makeup kit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Tyson Wade Richards uh, has been a regular feature of uh, reg regular winner of Bot Shots, and this week is no exception. Uh, come on, Barbie, let's go party with uh, with RC. So good, good job. Classic. Good job. Well, um, look, look, it's 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 different, right? Every every week we've got people putting their bots out in the garden and stuff like that. So like, it, it's nice to see. It's nice to see a little bit more inventiveness with what you can do in the house. Mm, yep. No, nah, true, especially during this time of year where it's a bit wet, it's a bit cold, you don't want to get the bots out outside, just do something inside, and this is fantastic. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah. How many more weeks have we got for bot shots? We got, we'll have one more bot shots competition for this week before, uh, for this month before we uh, go for a monthly winner, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, I've secured a prize, and I'll make an announcement during the uh, Wednesday draw, and as a little tidbit, tidbit trickle, Clue tease for the end. I'm, I'm not saving you from this one. No, I, I'm, I've already that hole's dug. I've uh, got blisters. Um, end of year, uh, junkie on matrix of leadership. There'll be one up for um, giveaway to uh, one of the winners. Um, I think we're going to do a, a fan vote, and a uh, the admins in the group will get together and pick their favorite for the year. So, Excellent. two prizes for the end of the year, and one of them will be a junkie on matrix of leadership. You will be able to light your own darkest hour. Exactly. Or just the darkest corner of your house. <laughs> it, depends on, look, it depends on the globe that you put in it, frankly. If you've got to pee at 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll know where you're going. <laughs> you have to pee at 3 o'clock in the morning. You'll just pick up the matrix and open. Why won't you open? And then, Oh, it's opened. Okay, cool. Now I can see. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's not get into the logistics of that issue. <laughs> Let's uh, let let you know what we should get into. Let's get into new some new bots, new transformers. Is it? Um, in the spirit of the uh, in the spirit of the double AMI insurance ad that's uh, been going around on TV at the moment, <laughs> there's a shipload of uh, there's a shipload of bots that got revealed this week. And so, without further ado, let's look at some studio series figures now. Just a, a, a word, if you are listening to the podcast and on, on an audio feed, you probably are going to want to look at the video for this or at least sort of try to try to sort of find some images and go along with us. Uh, we do have we do have links to links to the stories in the show notes. So you might want to open them up and 
just flick through with us. But uh, we will generally be going for the press photos that Hasbro's released. But there'll be a, there'll be a few there'll be a few shots from uh, things on the standard SCCC. So uh, first up, we've got stu- we're looking at new figures that were revealed this week for the Transformers uh, Studio series. Now, these figures take the series up to something like number twenty-five. That's some. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm frankly quite surprised because I really thought that this I, I really thought the Studio series would be like ten, maybe twelve figures, and then you're done. But um, they keep finding figures to put into it. So yeah. Well, uh, Einhide's at like five, and it's just come out, and all of a sudden we've got twenty more. <laughs> yeah, 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 ab- absolutely. Uh, so here's Dropkick. Now, Dropkick is uh, Dropkick is, I believe, one of the one of the new bots in the Bumblebee movie, isn't it? Is it Shatter and Dropkick? By, or is name. It- by name, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know from one other reveal that uh, the Bumblebee movie bots were going to be part of Generation Slash. Uh, studio series. Um, mm-hmm. This has no car bits <laughs> at all. <laughs> he doesn't quite look like the um, look like the figure that we saw during the week. No, on, uh, no. As, as the character reveal. We, we t- I think did we talk about that last week? I think we did. Yes, yeah, we talked about the the, the two uh, characters that have been revealed. So, but Chatter and Dropkick on- are hunters in the Bumblebee movie. But uh, Dropkick here does not look anything like Dropkick on the screen on the screenshots that we've seen. But Bumblebee movie aside and uh, story storyline mm-hmm. aside, it's a fantastic looking helicopter. Apache Apache gunship. He looks kind of like gunship. what I would expect a movie world to look like. Yeah, he's yeah. got he's got he's got he's got the world color scheme as well. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's he doesn't as... he doesn't quite have the uh, obsession with weapons that uh, he's comes not as skeletal. Me. In the robot no, mode, no, no, but he's still got the same sort of form and um, sort of the things happening around his feet, right? But yeah, yeah. it anyway. sort of reminds me. It reminds me more of the uh, like the All Spark series that came out of the first movie, where we had some of those cyber uh, Cybertron figures or whatever it was that come through, um, which were good solid robots like Big Daddy and some of those figures. I still think are like almost perfect Transformers, just. Perfect alt modes, and then good beefy G one sort of inspired alt mo- uh, robot modes as well. But um, yeah, yeah, no, I like I like what's happening here. Let's move on. Uh, so uh, worth pointing out, Dropkick. The, all of these figures, except for the next one, we're going to look at are deluxe class. The, this one's the Voyager class. This is Ironhide. Now he's looking pretty nice. Mm. I, I, I think I do think it's interesting how all the movie bots have the uh, the sort of deformed bonnet. As their chest. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're looking at Ironhide. Ironhide has somewhat uh, Tyrannosaurus Rexy tiny tiny arms. Um, <laughs> that's probably why he's always so angry. It's all um, about the guns. <laughs> but he does, it does have a nice uh, nice GMC Ute as as his alt mode with a four by four logo on the back. Um, thoughts on Ironhide? I well, the alt mode's got a little bit more detail than what the original 07 movie figure had um i still prefer the 07 movie robot mode mm-hmm. um, because this thing has still got no ankle tilts it's still you got your knees and your hips and that's it there's no no extra motion like there's no sideways motion apart from the hips so you can't really pose it fair um, enough yeah couple, but uh, there, are, there have been a couple of figures that hasbro's managed to slip an ankle tilt or two into but uh, yeah. it just looks like this is not going to be one of them yeah, and I'm not like I think most of the Ironhide figures. Like it's one of my favorite characters out of the film, the live action series. Like most, most of the um, I I can't really recall a bad Ironhide figure. Like yes, they got certain articulation and that, but they also do their own little things. Some mm-hmm. are more movie accurate in bot mode, some more movie accurate in alt mode. Um, I've still got the leader. Leader Ironhide's the one figure I kept uh, leader wise. Um, just because I like that figure so much, and it's got blue, like a light blue leg, just the same color as what's behind that studio series, which is not movie accurate at all. But <laughs> <laughs> he's got a Bowie knife, so <laughs> I, I, I think it's a little bit interesting. Some of the um, like the, some of the studio figure, studio series figures, 
they're bringing back characters that we haven't actually seen in quite a long time in the movies. Like, if you think about the cast that we just had in the last night, like, they're way different to Ironhide. Like, you know, you got Drift and Crosshairs and everyone. It's like, you know, it, it's been, we haven't seen Ironhide in a, in a long time, and it's sort of nice to see him again. But, well, that's apart from Ratchet, what we're going to get to in a minute. I. Einhide's one of the only Autobots that was brutally murdered and removed <laughs> from the movies yeah. altogether. Like B Prime, they're all still alive. Whereas, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, the KSI Century is uh, loosely related to Transformers: Age of Extinction. <laughs> I say loosely related because I don't remember seeing a blue car that functioned in a Century in Age of Ex- as, as a Century in Age of Extinction. Do you? They're all red stingers. Yeah, well, <laughs> weren't, weren't they all red stingers? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've forgotten something about Age of Extinction. It's possible, but um, look, you know, it looks like a looks like a fairly nice alt mode. Um, robot mode seems fairly standard movie stuff, but um, you know, nicely detailed and you know, nice nice looking pieces. So yeah. Well, you often see the 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 hateful or not the hate, but the the complaints about repaints. If this was red and exactly the same as Stinger, yet its name had changed, would that would that be worse? <laughs> oh, it'd be like, confusing because no, we just... already have a Stinger in the studio series. Yeah, I know, but he was one character which wasn't really isolated in the film. But yeah, here we go. So, yeah, look, let's talk about Ratchet a little bit. So uh, Ratchet is Ratchet is here in a sort of a, a bit of a half half of his G one sort of color scheme although it's more gray than white and and some green and uh he's got the he's got the infamous e4 on his uh on his back i think one of the figures had that and uh he's looking like a, he's looking like a fairly looking like a fairly nicely detailed but uh you know decently articulated uh deluxe studio series looks yeah. like he might have a bit of a backpack but we'll see yeah it's funny they sort of mentioned dark of the moon there where it was sort of revenge of the fallen where he changed from being completely green to having this more of a stripe and being different colored in alt mode that sort of it well it didn't really shine through into his robot mode because in <laughs> revenge of the fallen he was still the same uh model asset but um i yeah i i haven't got the studio series ratchet the original one i don't i just don't want ratchet to be of deluxe i want him to be i want him to stand side by side with ironhide well um, maybe you'll get you maybe you'll get your wish later on well yeah i've, I've just pre-ordered a um third party movie figure so yeah fingers are crossed that's gonna happen later so next up we have uh we have shadow raider now um there's been, a, there's been a little bit of head scratching going on around the community today with the reveal of this figure because no one seems to remember it from a movie, um, which is a, it's kind of like, like I was saying, like I feel like the studio series might have gone on a little bit longer than it should have because now they do seem to be just making up characters, which is it's the old thing we used to see with some of the movie lines where it's just like, oh, they'll just throw in a whole bunch of bots that were never in the movie. Still, Shadow Raider is said to be from Transformers Age of Extinction um, and turns into what looks like, is it a Lamborghini logo on him? Yeah, it is straight up the uh, lockdown figure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he's a, he's, a, he's a lockdown, but um, in Albert name. Yeah, these haven't got the numbers assigned to them. No, they I'm do not. Noticing. Yeah. Let's um, move on. Deluxe class Bumblebee. Now, this is the Bumblebee that we are expecting to see turn up at least for some of the Bumblebee movie that's due out this December. Now. I look at this and I see quite a decent retool of the first studio series Bumblebee, which was itself retooled into Stinger. And like I can I can see where he's doing he's got much the same features as that in the bonnet design, the bonnet shape, some of the parts that wrap around his legs, his feet, and his um swappable arm cannon. But I still like I, I still quite like the original studio series Bumblebee. Just don't look at it from don't look at it from the side, um, but uh, yeah. So this is this is this is the official studio series incarnation of Bumblebee as he's seen in the movie. So quite a versatile mold they came up with. I, I know Max had issues with that original figure with loose joints. Now, did you you've you've got it? And did you have any issues with it? Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of the studio series figures, 
if you if you like transform them a lot and play with them a lot, I think their joints do get quite loose. But uh, like we all know how to fix you know loose joints on, on a figure. That's not that hard. And I think I think it happens. And I don't think it's a particular blight on one specific line or figure. I think it just happens. Yeah. Um, well, and so that's if they're going to share the same sort of skeletal um, engineering, then it's fine. Like, but <laughs> that alt mode that move over masterpiece b that that thing looks fantastic <laughs> apart yeah, from whatever it is sticking out front of the yeah the yeah the, yeah there's a, there's a couple of little bits just sticking out the front i don't know that. what it yeah, is yeah. i'm trying to look at the robot mode to see what it's not ironhide's feet sticking out from under the truck mode i don't know what that is but you know what i think it is there. i think it's some kind of a weapon. See how he's got the he's got like what looks like a blade attached to his arm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's something to do with that. But we'll see. Weapon storage underneath there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But possibly. Yeah, but it looks it's a fantastic looking bot in both modes. Like it's a lot more it's a lot more detailed looking robot than what we got out of the actual movie Bumblebee. Whether that's just an issue with transformation engineering, whatever else, but um I think, I, I, think like seeing, I think we've seen plenty of detail of Bumblebee in the movie. Yeah, but he's sort of he's rather simplistic in the film. Uh, I, think, I think it's just the shots in the trailer. Anyway, oh, yeah, well, okay. that is it for the studio series reveals. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to pick them up or not. I haven't. I haven't really been a studio series collector, but um, I I do not discourage anyone from collecting them. There's quite a lot of love out there for studio series so um if you're into it pick them up yeah yeah no it's nice nice looking bots there and um some some figures you're not sort of gonna double up on um I, the one one bot that's missing from this is there's gonna be a um another uh bumblebee last night bumblebee uh, we, shown we, off we, as well we are, which... we are getting to that Okay, all right. That wasn't with the Studio <laughs> Series news. <laughs> no, because it's with the SCCC news. Okay. All right, all right. let's let's move on. Uh, next thing is uh, one of one. There's one more Prime Wars trilogy reveal this week, uh, and it's kind of a special one actually because a lot of the a lot of the, so the Prime Wars trilogy is just sort of uh, the figures are kind of just mopping up the the, the dregs of power <laughs> of the Prime. We have a retool of uh, well, we have the the Takara version of Blastoff coming over to the the Prime Wars Blastoff, and uh, you guys talked about Repugnus last week while I wasn't on. Now this guy is notable because he's a new mold. He's a new mold, and he's going to be a single use mold, which makes him kind of special. So punch, punch and counter punch. Uh, it's it, punch counter punch is a G one figure that functioned as both an Autobot and a Decepticon for. Um, for uh, espionage purposes, and I'm looking, and I don't know if we've got it. There we go. And so, look, basically, you, you like you turn him around and flip a few parts around, and so he goes from Autobot, and you can sort of see how this happens, right? He goes from Autobot <laughs> to Decepticon, but it's still quite cool and quite ingenious the, the the differences that they can get out of the figure. So, bearing that in mind, there's his uh, there's his box design. Um, if you do want to recreate the box, you are going to need to buy two of them. Just <laughs> it's um, a deluxe, so it's more. Than yeah, possible. yeah. Like he, he's a deluxe. Uh, he is up for sale now uh, on some of the US sites, so you can get him. He's twenty five US dollars, I think. Um, plus sixty five hundred dollars. Yeah, tax. yeah. Plus, 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 you know, shipping and um, yeah. <laughs> Basically, uh, but if you don't have a firstborn yet, you probably shouldn't bother. Uh, and oh, and he comes with a um. He comes with a uh, b- what do they call him? A Prime Master, uh, and I think it's um, oh, Prima. I think it's Prima. Wait, if I scroll up, I'll be able to see this. Prima Prime, <laughs> Prima Prime sounds like a kid's lunch lunch um lunchtime drink. Mm, so that, that would be the uh, like the blueberry lemon lemonade or the blueberry yeah. ice. Blueberry yeah, blueberry ice. Bl- blueberry ice Prima. Um, yeah. Good on good on you. Good on you, Hasbro. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, as I say, there's been there's been quite a bit of a stir about count uh, about punch counter punch in the group, um, and uh, yeah, look, I'm not sure whether or not I'm not sure whether or not um, some of these more exclusive figures coming at the tail end of the line. I'm not sure whether they're actually coming into some of our local retailers. So if you can't find them there, you might you might have to do yourself a, a bit of a uh, bit of a number on getting a uh, getting an account with a freight forwarder. 
Um, yeah, they're going to be online only. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, so, yeah. I, I know it's it's it, it's it's a name that comes up regularly in the group, and I I've got no recollection. But why do I keep on thinking of Bender from Futurama whenever I hear that name? Is there any Prima? No, no, Punch Cat a Punch. No idea. No idea. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> No idea whatsoever. Um, they could get Joe DiMaggio to voice him if there was a cartoon, but that would mean going back to Machinima. So well, he's already doing that. Crosshair, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So here is the big news. Oh, now, my God. Now, we know, uh, yeah, hold, hold your horses. Just like, you know, <laughs> I know you're excited. So we know that the, the next big line for Transformers for the next, uh, the next probably three years is going to be War for Cybertron. The first. The first part of that, it's, it, is, it is arranged in a trilogy in three parts, just like uh, Prime Wars uh, had Combiner Wars, Titans Return, and Power of the Primes. Now, the War for Cybertron trilogy, the first part of it is the uh, ominously named Siege. And War for Cybertron will see the return of the Micromasters. Yay! <laughs> that was your cue. Oh, wow. I've Back... Last year, two years ago, look what, look, what ha- look what happens to be just in like in uh within reach of, of the uh of the microphone. Look at that. There's a, there's some there's some boxed G1 micromaster goodness. Well, there they yeah, they're coming back, baby. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, no, a couple couple of years ago, where um, we've seen SD, I'm pretty sure it was SDCC, um, the uh. Sound Blaster and their base modes sitting there next to Fortress Maximus and just the could the whole concept of um, Micromasters and the base modes coming back was sort of inkled or hinted at there and um, I <laughs> comedically called them uh, my first kitchen and I'm still need to get Grimlock's boxes up in there. I'll get it out eventually and get the apron out so I can do that. But when I say this and saying these two figures that I have for, from G1 and have memories from G1 playing with um, and still have. And now I've got these to compare them to and display at conventions or whatever else with the G1 counterparts. So just, I'm sold. (laughs) Did I meet you? I've done something. Wait a minute. I've done something. I don't know what's happening. I can't select you. Something's wrong. No, that's not you. Jason's gone. And now here I am by myself, talking to myself. That's Chaos Fairy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was trying to find it. What happened then? <laughs> I, un- I, un- I unmuted myself by exiting and rejoining. Oh, um, there you go. So, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, these these things are probably the most nostalgic thing I've had from the uh, the current, well, the last few lines. Um, and nothing nothing really powered the primes. Even Tide's Return wasn't really, nothing really caught my, got my fancy, but uh, these things, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Like they, these are actually great updates to the G1 MicroMasters. Like I, I like I'm quite familiar with the MicroMasters, and like I can actually see which which figures they're updating here. So they've been really they've been really faithful to the original characters for the MicroMasters. Not that they all had that much character anyway, but like the original designs of them, they've been really faithful to them. And Hasbro has been doing good things. Let's say great things actually at the legend scale for a, a few years now, and so. I feel like these guys. Oh, uh, my! I had an error loading an app. I feel like these guys are a little bit smaller than a normal Legend scale bot because they're going to come in pairs. So I think these guys are going to take the Legends twenty dollar price point. But for that, you'll get two bots, and so so you're going to get two ten dollar bots instead of one twenty dollar bot. Um, but but uh, they combine as well. That's one they? thing. There's a there's a yeah there's an um, advertisement showing these things. These two actually combine back to back to uh be a big gun for optimus prime or whoever holds it i suppose but um 
it's only it's only like a little port that. that they just connect together. It's not it's not combiner wars where they got a big. Oh, look at that! So things. look, you can you can you can see actually that like the cannon on the top of the uh, on the cup of the top of the truck is obviously the handle. Mm, so yeah. yeah, fair enough too. Yeah, didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's just another another one of those little playability features out of them. But um, yeah, 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 no, um, <laughs> I love this. And if you have a look at a couple of the others, some of the others look great too. Well, let's keep on let's keep on going. Like they're they're a little bit out of order, but um, so we've got a deluxe class Chromia now. It's been a few people looking at this and thinking <laughs> that this looks like um, Moonracer, and I think that's hard to fault. And I wonder if what we're looking at is a bit of a retool of that figure because there's quite a large backpack on it as well. And I, I, I don't have Moonracer here to actually like compare what she looks like, but um, I feel like I feel like we're looking at a, a like a different outer shell on the same robot. What do you reckon? Does did she, did Moonracer have this much detail? Like this looks I, like, like I, a... ju I just said I think it's a different. Yeah, outer I know. Shell. Yeah, I know. Look, yeah, but just it's definitely got the big backpack. You can see it there, and that's if that's yeah. a um, issue with the engineering the transformation. That's one mm -hmm. thing, but just it sort of it reminds me of Trypticon, just how detailed it is. Um, this isn't G one at all. This is <laughs> hyper detail. Well, so um, Chromia, so. Chromia in this color scheme is a character that's sort of drawn more from the comics, but the name has been used. Um, the name was used, I think, first for one of the bots in uh, Revenge of the Fallen, right? One of the most. Yeah, yeah, that was a Chromia deluxe. I, I think that was the first time we'd seen the name used. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Still... She was on a G1. No, oh, yeah, no. maybe she was. You know, I might, I might be. I might be doing her a tremendous disservice, but uh, I'm I'm sure if, if <laughs> whoever was making up oh, or con creating bots in Revenge of the Fall, I'm sure I don't think Chromia is something you'd make up for Revenge of the Fall, and like there'd have to be something beforehand. Man, look at look at look at this though, right? See if I if I hold my phone up there, I see this is the primitive version of screen sharing. But, um, <laughs> see if you can see if you can get, like get a focus on that but like that looks very similar to that looks very similar to this just different some different colors and different there's a few different parts on there but oh man it looks so close i will say and confirm that these or well, that figure you've shown and the one we've seen on screen is nothing like the revenge of the fallen one which was well, no, one of those because there was a motorbike but yeah yeah, no, anyway. I think those those the generation Zinkles, the thrilling thirty that come out just after RC or something that was yes. um Yeah, so that was one of yeah. one of the fan bots. She was more IDW style. And more of a light cycle alt mode. Yeah. Um let's move on. Um we have a there is a deluxe class cog who is very distinctly using Fort Max's color scheme. I thought this was Warbitron, the the head. <laughs> I'm like, what <laughs> was that a trial run for Hasbro to say? Okay, we're going to do our own Ford Max changing head, but no. Um, well, they already did a changing head. Well, yeah, it was part of the Ford Max, but <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't, I don't, um, yeah. Any, any, anyway, Cog looks pretty armed and ready for battle. Um, it's got like six wheels on him, some tank treads, a couple of massive guns, a couple of handguns. Uh, Cog means business, I think. He's a battle station. He is. He is. He's a, he is, he's a one man battle station. Now, this was a surprise. This is a surprise. And I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like they're doing themselves a little bit of a disservice having this guy in a war for Cybertron series because. He's obviously got Earth Jeep stylings and colors, like with the the engine block, the star and stuff. I don't know if maybe maybe in the fiction that like they're going to leave Earth and go back to Cybertron for War for Cybertron or something. But um, this guy also shows off. Sorry, we are talking about Hound for people listening, uh, listening <laughs> on the audio version. Um, this guy has much more obvious um, uh, battle discoloration 
than we've seen on any of the other figures thus far. So his uh, his feet and the the front of the the front of the bonnet, um, they've got quite a lot of um, quite a lot of paint paint wear on it, which is um, I guess meant to make him meant to make him look battle hardened. But like I said, I, I'm I'm not entirely not entirely sure that they really should be throwing in such Earth mode references on these figures that are in War for Cybertron. But um, I also kind of feel like this might be Hasbro. Well, this might be Hasbro's designers sort of going, yeah, that last hand we did was a bit shit. Let's do him properly. I liked the Combiner Wars hound slash But, it, but, it, but it, he wasn't but, hound. No, I know, I know, yeah. But this, is this really? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this looks more like hound than any figure I've seen since okay. the Generations hound. Yeah. We, we reported last week with Prime Sideswipe and... Prime and Sideswipe. The, fire, with drive, the, fire Drive. Yeah, but he didn't have the battle damage. Just the... No, yeah. That, 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 how they seem to be going more for this sort of aesthetic. We reported a couple weeks ago about the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars crossover. Yeah, all the yeah, true. Panel lines and that. And here they've sort of... Uh, just a panel here and there. And I mentioned the Max at the same time. That sort of We mentioned it when Masterpiece Megatron was announced, how you have one or two panels on the figure that have the battle damage gimmick and... It doesn't really reflect the whole figure, <laughs> and so but that, the, here's the thing though: if you look at this, like it is kind of all over him. Like, yeah, um, yeah, you can, this, you this can see a lot. More. Yeah, you can see it a lot on the on the alt mode. Uh, sorry, you can see it on the the front of the alt mode. You can see it on his legs, his lower legs mm. in the bot mode. You can see it on the engine block, and also if you look at back at his alt mode, you can also see it on the wheel arches over the back as well. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't know if they're actually going to do this. I feel like I feel like. Um, we, we were quite surprised by the paint job that Hasbro brought out on Squeaks for the last night because um, it was quite a lot more detailed than we were used to seeing from Hasbro. And I wonder if that was sort of a bit of a trial run to see whether they could get away with this kind of a, this kind of battle damage on their paint jobs. Well, maybe also Cogman and the leader Grimlock. No, not leader. That was Studio Series Grimlock. Hmm. Skeletron had sort of the same sort of as well. He but, did, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you 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 were saying before how maybe his alt mode or his robot mode has gone back to Cybertron after being on Earth. Let's not <laughs> forget that first opening of uh, the original G1 cartoon where they're all walking around Cybertron. Yes. And their <laughs> modes are com- <laughs> clearly... Yes, um, we know. Yeah, so yeah. I just... Maybe it's a merger of the two. Maybe. Now, this is the figure that makes me wonder whether or they're... Whether they're intentionally going back and redoing figures that they fucked up because this is <laughs> this is deluxe class ironhide and he looks pretty awesome he looks like a really good ironhide did except, you not like the cup yeah except he kind of <laughs> looks like cup now whether or not this is actually a retool of cup into ironhide i don't know but i reckon it's highly possible that there's a lot of shared engineering between them doesn't change the fact that he looks pretty awesome. I really, I really love his gun, uh, and he's he looks to have quite a quite a lot of detailed articulation. I mean, look at the way the way that he's holding the gun, the way that, and look at that. Look, they look. There's ankle tilts. Oh, he's a chunky monkey. Yeah, and he he's a chunky monkey, and Ironhide yeah. needs to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, in relation to Cup, the the windscreen chest, I I definitely get Cup from that, but. If they've just reused or remolded, taken that piece from Cup to add to this, just because, well, Cup's a Cybertronian mode. Like, there's no, there's no way they're going to make this a Mitsubishi wagon, <laughs> Bongo Man or anything. It's, it's a Cybertronian mode. So, um, yeah. But so still, I, 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 I do. I don't, I don't actually like, have a Cup within uh, within reach to compare. I never. I still have not got that figure. <laughs> I wanted it. <laughs> uh look uh, look that perceptor we'll, we'll 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 be able to tell soon what um whether or not ironhide ironhide is actually a retool but you can but, definitely um, see I like that, him. that I, I reckon, I think it looks good yeah 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 similarities there so let's move on so um one of the sm- I, I i think these guys are going to be the ten dollar ten dollar figures that are going to take over from the titan masters the battle masters um so this is this is lionizer um and uh, yeah, he turns from a lion into some kind of a sword by the looks of it. 
um, ice I axe. <laughs> yeah, some ice ice axe, ice sword, ice to meet you, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. So like, yeah, that's okay. Whatever. Mm. I don't it was really also care. different to like shuffler and well, you showed it before shuffler mm. and that. We just got that. We got the 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 alt mode animal that just seems to <laughs> disintegrate into a weapon. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to the micro masters. Ooh. We need to put you back in a good mood. Um, micro masters, Damn, man, what's your plan? Massive, massive holes in their chests, but whatever. Uh, this is the Autobot race car patrol. That is very obviously Road Handler, and uh, his, <laughs> like, Road, Road Handler is one of my favourite micro masters ever. And I can't remember the name of the other one, but um, <laughs> yeah. someone, someone in the group asked if that was a Delorean today, and I can see where they get it from, but apparently it's not because it's silver. No, 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 the front of the car looks very DeLorean like. Anyway. Uh, they need to go back and watch that movie. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, so yeah, two more, two more classic MicroMasters updated into the Autobot Race Car Patrol. Hopefully, we'll see the rest of the Race Car Patrol come and join them. We'll see. Um, we might but see the- a Sports Car Patrol, and these the Autobot Rescue Patrol is here as uh-huh. well. Um, these guys look great as well. Um, and, oh, look at look at that Cybertronian text on the uh, side of the police car. Yeah, and there's this little. So if 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 barricades to punish and slave, what's the Autobot version? Probably to serve and protect. Let's move on to the big. <laughs> let's move on to the big daddy, leader class Ultra Magnus. Now, I believe the, I believe the Optimus Prime that we've seen we talked about last week is a Voyager class figure. Is that right? Yes, Voyager. So this is so this is the only leader class figure that we've seen revealed thus far for for Siege. Here's oh, as Ultra Magnus. Now, if you look at the way that this works, the cab comes off and transforms individually, and it looks like the trailer parts forms into armor. And I got we, I, uh, I, got, I got no problem with that. That looks cool. We're at this stage now, where where fans that may have brought MPO. Two? You mean the ones that bought him? <sighs> are now old enough to be designers and everything. Like there's, there's a fan involved here. No, but, but I, I think this harkens back to the original Ultra Magnus toy, like using the trailer as armor to for his robot motor. That's exactly yeah, okay. what we did back in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, no, good point. I, um, I, I think it's quite faithful to that. I, I actually. I really like the truck design, but I kind of feel like it looks like Lego. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. um, it's it's that it's that shade of blue. Yeah, yeah. I suppose one thing that's interesting too is that this is not the prime design at all. This no. looks completely well, different to the prime. So, like, I I want I still I still feel like there'll probably be a leader class prime. In, oh, in okay. You reckon they're just gonna paint the truck red? <laughs> I don't, no, no. You know what I reckon they'll do is I, I reckon they'll I reckon they'll yes, sorry, they'll paint, they'll paint the cab red. And I think they'll give you a different trailer. Yeah. Or, or the trailer won't actually parts form and become armor. The trailer will just be the trailer, or there Ooh. won't be a trailer. Whatever. What if you just get a purple and black, or just a black prime cab? I don't think that would be prime. <laughs> Sleep mode. <laughs> the purple one would be shattered glass. Yeah. Anyway, now uh, that is the end of the siege reveals for this week. So th- this stuff is probably going to form the first couple of waves of siege when it comes out in early 2019. And so it won't be out for Christmas, although it might be out for Christmas in some places. But um, there is one notable omission from all of this. Do you know what it is, Brad? Uh, the Bumblebee helmet. <laughs> No, it's the Decepticons. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> and Two <that's>... notable emissions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only wanted to mention that because it had the original 07 movie Megatron inside the box. But, um, yeah, no Decepticons here in this reveal whatsoever. So No Decepticons it's... at all. I suspect that come next week we will be talking about the Siege Decepticons. But... Uh, there's a couple of days left of San Diego Comic Con, and I reckon when we all get up tomorrow, because we are recording on a Friday night, when we get up tomorrow, we're going to be greeted with a bunch of Decepticons. I'm how's, going how's, to, that, how's that for Fruit Loops? I'm going to eat those Fruit Loops and <laughs> probably not digest them well by saying that maybe Siege is Autobot only 
and oh, whatever we no. get from the second second se- second wave, whether it's siege, uh, attack, no, it wouldn't be attack, something that's not defense, that's uh, <laughs> attack, uh, is Decepticon, and that's where we get the Decepticon wave, but. I don't know. I don't. I don't think they want to. I don't think they want to do a whole wave of Decepticons though, or the or a whole line. I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, we'll yeah. find. We'll find out tomorrow. We'll, yeah, see, yeah, how, we we'll see how we go. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have a new reveal this week, which is a. Um, I think I, I think I originally termed this um, "I love the '80s" because one of the photographs showed this prominently in the in the background. But uh, Target in the USA is getting an exclusive. Bumblebee movie redeco of Titans Return Soundwave. Doesn't say whether or not his head actually forms part of the toy or transforms this time. His head looks, do you reckon his head it, looks slightly different? It looks pretty solid. It I don't does. see, yeah, I don't see a Titan yeah. Master there at all. Yeah, I don't see one either. We'll see, we'll see how you go. Um, so Soundwave is now. Soundwave is now packaged as a, as a boombox. His handle has actually formed part of the packaging. I think that's quite clever. Um, they've made the Decepticons <laughs> cool by having this little glint off the Decepticon logo. On the, like, everything about this, like, like I just I just really like the way they've done this packaging. I think it's cool. Um, Dare I say Soundwave by way of Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, no, I, I think there's I think there's definitely that vibe to it because I mean they both they both play to the same drummer. Yeah, uh, like Guardians of the Galaxy is so in love with the '80s, and this is really trying to evoke the uh, sort of '80s '80s feel. Now, if you've been wondering why you've been wandering around uh, Australia trying to find cheap Titans Return sound waves <laughs> in the last few weeks, and you weren't able to find them because they all mysteriously disappeared off shelves, now I think we know why. Because Hasbro's been planning to repackage them like this, but um, yeah, so. You get you get a you get a Titans Return Soundwave, and if you're looking for cassettes to go with him, well, Hasbro's got something for that for you as well. They have a frankly shit house looking Bumblebee. Um, what let's, is let's, that? I don't know. <laughs> I think yeah, I don't know. You've got the movie Bumblebee on the box, and it looks nothing. It's got to be it, like a. He looks terrible. That reminds me of the uh, drift, the butterfly knife. <laughs> yeah. So it's a it's an Age of Extinction Bumblebee flick flick knife. The thing, the thing that's important in this is that Bumblebee comes packaged. This shitty Bumblebee. You know what? This is not even. Uh, look at the Bumblebee next to it, and look at the one in the box. They're actually different as well. I, I, oh yeah, yeah. I thought they were actually meant to be the same thing. Um, no. Also, Hasbro has chosen the tiniest acrylic stand known to man to place this box <laughs> on. Good job. Uh, it's wow. not. It's it's nice and stable. And do feel free to throw that comment in with the hashtag join the buzz in the background. <laughs> but um, I don't know what the fuck this bumblebee is meant to be. I don't like. I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. The important thing about this package is those three cassettes, um, which are a blue redeco of Ravage, um, sort of echoing one of the e hobby releases, um, a, a redeco of Buzzsaw, and uh, one of the. Uh, one of the frenzy and the the, the op well, the opposite of rumble. I think we we had rumble already, didn't we? Or did we not? Uh, friend, we had both. We've had both. Uh, had I don't think so. Rumble. People are very people are very excited about this one. I don't think we've had both. I think Sorry. we've I think we've had the both. The Auto- oh, we've <laughs> I think we've had the Autobot ones. I don't think we've we, had the Decepticon guys. We've had a red red version of this whether, whether you want to call it rumble or frenzy that's up to you you can just call this one the other one but this is yeah it has the eyepiece this is what eye eye on it. yeah it had the eyepiece over you're saying back then that it was from a comic where he had a camera or something on the eye yeah yeah re, so yeah. rewind rewind has a oh, camera okay. next to it. Yep. And that's why i'm saying it was the audible one but uh Oh, it's right. kind of weird. Bumblebee comes packaged with Decepticons. I guess we know the Decepticons are hunting him in the movie and tracking him. So here we go. Um, still, like these guys are legend scale figures. They're you know, ostensibly worth about twenty bucks <laughs> each at retail. So um, you know, nice to see them all sort of bundled up together in the in the box. Yet again, another repaint of the stripes figure. <laughs> yeah. Can we yeah. not put the feet upside down up there? <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that. Is, is that actually been transformed or like? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a dead cat mode, but yeah, yeah. So um, there, there's, another, there's another look at Soundwave now. 
looking at this, so Soundwave has actually been done up for the 80s. Oh, yes. Look at, There's look some at, stickers look at that. on this. Yeah, look at those stickers. <laughs> um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah good, good job, Hasbro. Nicely mm. done. Uh, uh, there is the there is the uh, Titans oh, look, the headmaster port there too. So the head does come off. I think it has to, given the way that um, it transforms. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll we'll find it. Maybe the maybe the head's a, a special new mold for it. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, neat neat little uh, neat little reveal uh, coming to Target probably later in the year when uh, when the the Bumblebee movie comes out. I nearly said the Soundwave movie. <laughs> <laughs> so when the Soundwave movie comes out, uh, what a, some discussion in the group uh, occurred today as to whether or not Soundwave will be in the Bumblebee movie. I don't think so. I think it's, no. I think it's just a neat way to neat way to package up and resell some old toys. Yeah, yeah, and we've seen that plenty of times before where they uh, take take previous figures and rebox them, remarket it. Is that that yeah. that's that's toy marketing one hundred and one? Yeah. Let's talk about a little bit of Cyberverse stuff where I think we're doing pretty well for time um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, then we'll, we'll wrap it up after after Cyberverse. I think there's a few, a few more STCZ reveals. Now, um, we're not going to do it because we'll, it'll just get us kicked off YouTube and probably get our families hunted down and killed, but uh, Hasbro did actually show off some animation from uh, Cyberverse uh, this morning. I, I think a lot of us saw it land in the, um, <laughs> land in the discussion group. Uh, did, you, did you watch the video? I've watched a couple. I just you continue on, and I'll. I'll All right, so, off so, so I like I liked the look of the animation, in that. So, so there's a couple of things. It looks like it looks sort of in universe with RID. It looks like a bit of an evolution of what um, Boulder Media did for Rescue Bots. So it's sort of like it looks a little bit like grown up Rescue Bots, um, and uh, like. <laughs> It looks like it looks like the toys as well, which I, mm. I I think we were kind of expecting that when we looked at how some of the toys look. But also, um, I like that everyone sort of moves and uh, as they pan across like the, the Decepticon ranks, you, you see them like you know, fold their arms, tap their feet, and stuff. And they're, they're all really animated because it, like in years gone by, it would just be background character, don't yeah. move, don't yep. do anything, background character. And like they're all they're all very. They're all very there and they're very present and very animated, and I really quite like that. the The footage that they showed off was a bit of a um, a bit of a rousing speech and a call to arms from Megatron, um, who cheekily ended his uh, ended his uh, call to arms with "Till all are one." Mm. Mm. And that's it's sort of one of those things where um, I know you're you're a fan of the animated stuff as well as me um having toys that look like the representations on uh the screen for the cartoon um it's still pretty new isn't it yeah yeah but it's just it these maybe aren't as uh articulated or uh, um i don't think these guys are as detailed as we we got with animated in terms of matching what's on screen but i don't think I, anything is quite going to do that again yeah, yeah, but um, still. Anyway, we'll get, it's early days yet for Cyberverse. Yeah, yeah. So let's have a look at some of the figures now. There's a Scout class Optimus Prime who seems to have some kind of a um, swinging gun gimmick. Um, Scout class in RID speak was the smallest of the classes, so uh, don't expect don't expect big things from this guy, but you will notice there that there's a five mil peg hole in one hand, but not the other. So um, Optimus <laughs> is definitely a righty. Mm. Now, this one I'm quite this one I'm quite fond of the uh, Scout class Slipstream, um, who does appear to have the uh, flapping wings that we've seen. I think there was a Star Scream that someone picked up at uh, at, at retail already. Uh, had the flapping wings and <clears throat> what is obviously a girl walk mode. Don't tell, <laughs> don't tell how many goal they. Eh? Um, but also, like in terms of like the robot figure design, I really I like the angles. I like the colors. I like I like a lot about this figure. I think I think she looks good. Yeah, and yeah. we sort of me and Max sort of discussed last week too about how we seem to be going for more obscure seekers or more obscure. 
jet mode. Well, so like, I've, I've, I've already I've already got all the little legends, um, little legend seekers over the last few years. So like, if this was just going to be Starscream, I wouldn't be that interested. But now that it's Slipstream, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, maybe I'm more interested now. Yeah. So uh, Windblade also features a girlwalk mode. I'm sure. <laughs> sh- I'm sure that they are trolling at this point. They are. This is trolling straight <laughs> up. Um, so Windblade, uh, um, fan favorite. Um, hi, I'm Windblade. But uh, with a killer yeah. boots fan. <laughs> yeah. Look, you know, um, look, they're, they're small. They're small transformers. What can you use your way? Um, there seems to be some gimmick with weapons in the uh, the tips of her wings. Um, and I think they might slide out or something like uh, something in, in robot mode shadow striker we know i believe to be the uh, the female decepticon commander um possibly the most efficient decepticon commander ever and um likely to be frustrated by the inefficiencies of the transformers around her uh she transforms into a neat car mode there and uh i do have to ask what the hell is an ultra class that used to be the uh next size up from leader so so she's huge if that's the case surely not you know you know what though i think looking at this like it's kind of a shell former right so mm-hmm. i think if, oh. you remember, if you remember the giant bumblebee that yeah. we got yep. a couple of years ago i think this might just be a bit of a redo of that yeah lay it down and push it together or pull it apart and it transforms automatically yeah, yeah. Now, on the other hand, um, this dude looks awesome. Ultra class shockwave. So this guy, this guy must be huge as well, if that's the case. Uh, but he doesn't uh, have the large kibble. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's that's right. Um, so yeah, this is a big Decepticon shockwave. Turns into the uh, turns into the tank from Ghost in the Shell. Everyone likes that. Um, there was no controversy. There was no controversy around that movie whatsoever. So I don't see why anyone would have a problem with anything from it. It's Justice League. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that too, right? Bat spider. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect we might be getting the definition of the ultra class size wrong, but um, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't really care. We'll see. Um, some of these toys have turned up at retail already, so um, you can go out and buy them if you're lucky, if you live in particular areas. Now, this one's interesting because this, ladies and gentlemen, might well be your seeker mold for the next few years. This is warrior <laughs> class, so he's the uh, he's the equivalent of a deluxe deluxe scale figure and it's acid storm and it's not easy being green <laughs> it's ne- it's never easy being green although if you um if you read the last the last few issues of idw um acid storm also doesn't like being painted gray so, <laughs> yeah uh so yeah so acid storm looks pretty decent um like somewhat simple engineering i'm actually i'm actually wondering if this is sort of i'm actually thinking thinking this might be broadly the same engineering and maybe a slight retool on the uh rid star screen mm. it's like he's got those he's got those shoulder pads as well and yeah i don't know i, I think the legs look kind of similar so we'll yeah. see as for that the mold itself it looks fine but yeah, just the paint yeah how much paint they're going to put on legend figures probably going to determine how good these figures are it's either going to be paint or it's going to be like molded in that yeah yeah we'll we'll see and um there's also the warrior class megatron um gun tank (laughs) i i I don't have a problem with this figure like like he's he's a warrior class so there's obviously been some trade-offs but like he's he looks like megatron i think I, i i think the cyberverse version of megatron um He's difficult to place age-wise. Like he doesn't necessarily look young, but and he looks he actually looks he actually looks sort of old. Like he's he's got a bit of old man face happening. Am I the am I the only one that sees that? Yeah. Yeah or no? Am I the only one that sees that? Or are you seeing it too? Oh <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm I'm the whole time you're talking, I'm like, wow, this thing's got no gaps or none of the warrior issues where you got hollow legs or anything. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, and, um, I, th- I think I think there's a, a solid little... looking figure. Yeah, look, a lot of the I think a lot of his parts sort of form the outside of uh, the outside of the vehicle. So yeah, fair enough. As, as for his head, I'm, I'm, 
would it be wrong to say I, I, I see sort of like a chibi face? It's like that Japanese, like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, just... I, I, I feel like he could look angrier. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing really menacing about the look on his face. Yeah, it's, ma- it's mainly the, the giant gun and the mace. Oh, that's a big gun. Yeah. <laughs> that's a massive gun. Yeah, uh, look, Megatron's needed massively oversized guns for a long time, right? Yeah. And for the de- even the detail of it too, which is fantastic. But yeah, yeah, it is. So uh, another warrior class figure to round us out. There's uh, another version of Windblade, just because like why not have, uh, why not have two? Uh, She's a fan favorite character. You, you like you know you're not going to you're not going to get away from her. Oh, if I had that time machine, we would be. <laughs> <laughs> um. So warrior class Windblade as well. Um. Not sure if she's a rework of the RID Warrior Class Windblade or not, but uh, yeah, look, there's it's a it's a it's a it's a good look at the first few figures of the line, right? It's a clean looking alt mode. I don't I don't have the others to compare it to, but just jet jet mode being a jet mode, not a jet with a robot hanging off the bottom of it. Oh, I still think it could be, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, well. We'll see. All right, let's uh, let's let's quickly go to check out a couple more a couple more figures to round us out. Like um, we have talked about these now. This is uh, this is one of the Studio Series figures repainted to be gold, and a couple of um, a couple of old uh, Japanese cassette reissues to go with him. Now, this is the first SDCC exclusive that got revealed a few weeks ago. And just today, we've seen that Entertainment Earth has his uh, counterpart. So <laughs> Entertainment Earth has the gold version of the Studio Series Deluxe that we just looked at earlier and comes with two more Japanese cassette reissues as well. Um, so, yeah, so, so uh, similar, similar looking but uh, different colour, different transparency, everything like that. And uh, these guys do, of course, combine. Look at that. <laughs> oh, and there's a bumblebee that comes with him as well. Oh, god. <laughs> so yeah, uh, also also nice to see a s- slight sort of change and them being a little bit playful with the studio series packaging too. Mm. So this is this is the retro pop highway set um, that they they've announced, and there is of course n- oh, I don't know maybe there's a price we'll see. Let's click yeah, through. Let's... The, let's click through to the Entertainment Earth website because nothing has no. ever gone wrong when I click. <laughs> Sixty US dollars we are looking at for this. I knew there was a reason I didn't order the other one as well. But uh, seventy-eight. Still seeing how like, no, eleven thousand dollars. Clearly, right? That's the price. Yeah. Plus plus one point two million dollar import tax. Yeah. I, of we we yeah. Max talked about this last week. How the um these Dinobot cassettes are something that's really rare in Takara and they've found molds for two of them but not the other two it <laughs> appears <laughs> and uh they're they're really gonna try and get their money back on these but um gold bug <laughs> it's gold bug so why not yeah, why not let, let, let's um let's go look at uh the other uh, the other exclusive from SDCC, the Throne of the Primes. You guys talked about this quite a lot last week, so won't go into them too much. But uh, are you going to buy this one? I'll probably buy this one over the other one just because it's more Prime Monkey. But being yeah. the exclusive, I don't. I'm not going online to buy it. So yeah, fair enough too. Now we saw these in the uh, we saw these in the background in some other shots just the, the last piece of news i've been saying for the last couple of months i'm not really sure whether or not the walmart hot rod was actually official or not <laughs> oh boy today hasbro left no doubt he is official uh, and they are officially re-releasing and bringing back some of the uh, g1 transformers so great great it's it's great to finally get confirmation from hasbro that yes these are legit um we are seeing the we're seeing the reissue hot rod now if you remember we looked at we looked at maz's post about this guy um a few weeks ago he has die cast feet um he's got the updated engine block that can hold a gun as well it's it's a it's a good reissue it's very solid um so fantastic and good job there megatron megatron uh, megatron starscream comes with the long missiles for safety reasons and uh comes with fists that have five mil peg holes in them now that's 
that's new for a Western release of Starscream. It's not new for a Japanese release of Starscream. That was actually that was actually the case with the Takara book reissue. So they're reusing they're using those molds um, for, for these figures. But uh, there you go. There's your Starscream reissue. We have these guys that are being called the Legion set. Um, wow. It's uh it, it's the it's mini bots. I think I think Bumblebee is in there as well. Yeah. So it's just poorly framed image, but. Uh, uh, so you got Bumblebee, Brawn, um, Swerve. <laughs> there's, been enough, there's been another Sorry, Bumblebee Cal-Mac. this week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like you can clearly get another Bumblebee into things. But uh, yeah, you know, nice, nice to get some of the more obscure mini bots as well. Mm. Uh, instead of instead of them just reissuing like Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And of course, there's the Devastator gift box as well. Because uh, let's be let's be honest, if you haven't got a G1 devastated by now you're probably going to buy this one is it just the uh the color of the photo does that look really blue i think looking at looking at the way that the photographs have been lit i think they've been lit quite distantly from above by sort of a big overhead light so um trade shows and trade shows and cons and stuff they never said like see how dark hot rod is there yeah yeah Um, they, these these places are never good photo good good places to get photographs of <laughs> figures or toys. Like I know this from going to like um, so I, I, in um, in February. Like I went to Barcelona and went to a bunch of mobile phone launches, and um, one of them, literally the demo, <coughs> excuse me, one of them, literally the demo area was um, in the dark with blue light overhead. I'm like. How the hell am I meant to see anything? <laughs> and it's like, do you want me to take a photograph of your product to like write it up or not? But yeah. Anyway, uh, so these guys are officially heading to Walmart in the states. We don't, we don't know whether they're going to head anywhere, um, anywhere locally here. Of course, Hasbro doesn't really like to talk to anyone in Australia, so it's really hard to tell. Um, but if you are after some of these guys, you can purchase them from some importers or. Uh, like I said earlier, get yourself a Com Gateway or a Shopmate account and start shipping them there. Mm. All right. Could you, could you imagine if they just appeared at Big W or something like oh, that? Can you <laughs> can imagine? You... Like, well, <laughs> Cyber, Cyberverse did. It just popped up at a Big W. Yeah, the first yeah. One in the world. yeah. They Not seem to of. have. They seem to have some of these things in place where, like, devastated. It only turned up there for the first few weeks for their toy sale and yeah. Look, 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 if, if you're big W, you can you can probably get someone from Hasbro to pick up the phone. If you're us, less so. But. Yeah. Yep. All right. Look, um, that is it. We we have actually made it through to the end of uh, through to the end of all the the toy reveals from this week, and um, we don't really have that much. We don't really have that much else to say. Next next week's show is probably going to be a little bit more uh back to normal um i think before we before we go we should just point out it is membership renewal season so uh if you have if you are yet to renew your tcca membership to, please do jump onto the website it's transformers cca.com membership is just five dollars for the year and uh it supports all of the things that we do to go out and uh, connect with fans around australia putting tables at conventions attending some of the smaller cons and um Generally, going out, printing up our printing up cards, and uh, going on recruitment drives. Mm. It's what we have a uh, a war path we can give away to uh, members that sign up in July. Do you recall what war path? Who it's, made it's that? the it's the Iron Factory war. Iron path. Factory. It is Iron Factory. <laughs> okay, Iron Factory yeah. war path. So um, that's on that's on offer for uh, those that sign up in July and uh, yeah, we've, so we've, sign we've up five bucks. You might 50. get yourself an iron, iron factory figure. Yeah, we've flown past the fifty member mark, so it's good. Good to see. Good. All right, uh, that is it for the show. Um, do feel free to check oh. out the. Uh, no, it's not it for the show. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be here next week because we have Nerd Mania. Guess what? I won't be here next week either. But. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll sort something out. We might be back in two weeks. We'll see. We might just have to take a bit of a breather after all of this week's reveals. Yeah, I want to I do some live stuff at the Mania next weekend. So, uh, yeah, when we're back, we're back. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you for checking us out. Uh, do check out the club site at transformerscca.com. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next week or in a couple of weeks' time. Lovely.
Bye-bye. Good night, guys.